HCAM TV thanks you for watching this presentation. We'd love for you to become a member and use your creativity at our station. Please visit hingamedia.org or call us at 781-836-5094 if you'd like to learn more. Joining us. I'm Tressa and um, I'm an Institute for Integrative Nutrition Certified Health Coach and we're really excited that you're here with us today um, to talk about sugar which is something that affects people in more ways than they know. So um, Tierney and I are both really passionate about this subject and how we can help you to figure out how much sugar you're eating and is sneaking into your diet in ways that you may not even realize. And um, so we just want to share some great information with you tonight and answer lots of questions. So we want to make this interactive, ask lots of questions, stop us along the way, um, and we're happy to you know, answer anything or get back to you if we don't know the answers. So I'm Tierney, I'm also an integrative nutrition health coach. That's how we met in our program. And I absolutely love teaching this class. This is one of my favorite classes to teach. I've done it a few times now at a couple of different locations, but I'm just so passionate about teaching people all about sugar and the effects of sugar and how detrimental it can be to your health in the mass amount and in the process amounts that we take it in every day. So this is a great class and I'm really excited to share all of this with you guys. Yeah. So we thought we'd start by asking what if you think about when you were a kid, like I could tell you that I loved yodels and like ring dings and um, I used to stop on my way home from high school and get a bag of peanut M&Ms, but not a little bag, a big bag of peanut M&Ms and I would sit and watch General Hospital and just eat peanut M&Ms right out of the bag. So um, there's a lot of sugar in those, but who knew back then? So if you think about when you were a kid, kind of what was your favorite sweet and maybe now? And beyond that, like, do you notice sugar affecting your life? And how? You know, some people get headaches, some people just feel like lethargic, but if there's anything that you want to share, we'd love to hear. Or someone in your family, if it's not you. Yeah, you can rat somebody else out. <laughs> Okay. Hot, tamales. hot tamales. Wow, I wouldn't expect that. Oh, God, I love hot tamales. Sorry, boss. Oh, <laughs> The drink, right? Yeah. Wow. Anybody else? Candy, yeah. soda? Candy, like, you know, yeah. uh, once you start, you can't stop. Yeah, Cadbury mini eggs. Yeah. <laughs> I always, even for Halloween, it's terrible because, you know, you want to hand out the candy to the kids. And yeah. You know, that stuff left over. Yeah. You wind up just chomping on it. But I went for the headache. Like yeah, feel, yeah, you know, yeah. Tired yeah, 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 definitely, yeah, anybody else? Um, I, I never really liked my candy, when I was a kid, I still, still do, uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to spend every weekend at my grandmother's house, and she had every sweet you could imagine in her house, she used to keep the, um, they came in a long package like this. They were Thin Mints, just a little chocolate covered Thin Mints in the fridge because my uncle liked them cold. My uncle used to live with my grandmother and those were always in the fridge so we were always eating them. But she had cosmic brownies, the oatmeal, cream pies, honey buns, pup tarts, fruit roll ups, gushes. I can't even, like it, it was endless and we used to spend every single week in there and that's all we ate. And then bread and carbs and butter and I also remember, and it didn't end there for me either. I remember in middle school, there's um, a little Tedeschi's uptown. And I would leave school and I would buy the two liter bottle of soda because it was 99 cents. You think I would be sharing it with people. I thought it was so cool to walk around and be drinking out of my two liter bottle of soda, like walking down the street and drink an entire two liter bottle of soda to myself, which is just crazy. So. Sugar was definitely a huge culprit for me for many, many years, and I noticed that my mood swings were all over the place. I got really irritable. Um, I actually, it affected my skin at a really young age. I had like severe acne 
starting as early as elementary school, I actually had to have a whitehead removed from my face by a dermatologist because it just wouldn't go away because my skin was so inflamed. So sugar did not do me good. It did not. Mm -hmm. Great. So for me, it was more the, um, the processed foods, but they all have so much sugar in them. Um, and when I gave up gluten about two and a half years ago um, and discovered that my acid reflux went away. <laughs> um, but what I find is if I cheat a little bit now and I have more of those processed foods that have the sugar and all the carbs in them, I get really, um, really tired and really lethargic and I have no energy. So that's how it affects me more. And so I try to do more. Um, if I'm going to have something, I try to do home baked, um, lower carbs, no gluten, and natural sugars and that kind of thing. So that's how it affects me. But my kids um, love sugar. And my daughter is a cookie monster. And um, she just thinks, lots of cookies, lots of sweets. And my son, like, these are like, I don't know, you know, Gatorade. He takes, he takes probably two or three of these to work with him a day. And I'm like, how about a bottle of water? No, oh, water you doesn't know? taste as good though, so right? No, it doesn't. But the more you have it, the more you want it. Yep. And it's that vicious circle. So we're going to share some more information with you about, about the sugar and where other places that you'll find it besides these obvious places. And then we'll talk more about. So something to keep in mind, um, I have two handouts right here, just like visuals. These are um, the recommendations from the American Heart Association. So they used to not have a recommendation for children because I'm not sure if they just didn't see it as necessary, maybe back in the day, but they didn't used to have this. This is actually within the past year or two that they've made a recommendation for children. So it's 25 grams of sugar is their daily allowance, which is actually only six teaspoons of added sugar. It is a lot. People don't think that, but it is. It's a lot of sugar. And I mean, added natural sugars and like fruits and vegetables that you're getting from are fine, but it's like the added sugar that we really need to be mindful of. Um, so then this is for an adult man and woman. For, a man, for men, it's nine teaspoons. So that works out to be about 36 grams of sugar. And then women is the same as children. So it's six teaspoons, which is 25 grams of sugar. So just keep that in mind as we go through talking about um, like back when they used to have the sugar, like when it first came out, how much they used to be consuming and how much we're consuming now. And then like the visuals that we go through. Yeah. So we looked it up before the class. The average American mm -hmm. gets about 100 grams of sugar a day. A day. Which is that. So that's, that's 25 sugar. teaspoons. That's a lot of sugar. So just imagine like taking a teaspoon and just putting 25, like just having a bowl of 25 teaspoons of sugar. When I was filling all of these up, like I said, we'll talk about them as we go into the um, class. But when I was filling some of these up to show like a visual, I was like, it's a, like a teaspoon is little. It's really little. So when you're just, tw even just like 12 teaspoons of sugar, it's, it's kind of sickening. <laughs> So yeah, um, the biggest thing that bothers me and scares me about sugar is just how addictive it truly is. And because people, it is, it's a food group, it's something, it's a macronutrient that our body needs. Our b brain runs off of a lot of glucose, so we do need it. So people don't see it in um, this light, but it is. It's it's a drug. It's as addictive, if not more addictive, than cocaine. When we have sugar in our system, our brain lights up. Dopamine, it releases dopamine, and our brain it's like it's like fireworks. If you were to see a scan of your brain when you have sugar, it goes crazy in all different areas of your brain light up because it makes you feel good. So that's why you get that typical kind of elated feeling in the crash and burn because when you have sugar, you are all over the place and you're elated and you're happy and then you start to plateau and then you crash. But people just don't, they don't realize it because they're just always looking for that next fix. They're always, like you were saying with Matt, like he, the water isn't as good and the more he drinks the Gatorade, the more he wants because your body is craving the sugar and it's giving you these signals 
that's saying, I need more, I need more, I need more. So it's just this cycle that just keeps going and keeps going. And we need to figure out how we can stop it and break it and be able to recognize those cravings and those signals so that we can get to more of a healthy state with it. But the problem is, is it's in so many things. And so a lot of it goes back to the 1950s um, when heart disease became a really big problem in the United States. It was President Eisenhower, right, that had a heart attack. And so um, these, all these doctors and researchers were saying that fat was the problem. But fat is actually a really important part of our diet, and fat isn't the problem. What happened back then was they started removing fat from a lot of products, and it wasn't tasting good because fat tastes good. And so what they were doing was the sugar industry was like, hey, here's our chance. And they started adding sugar to a lot of things. So who would think that this can of baked beans is loaded with sugar? And tomato sauce and salad dressings and all those things, ketchup. It's, it's in so much, if you start reading labels, you're amazed. So what's happened is sugar is in so much of our diet and sugar is really what's causing obesity, heart disease, diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, fatty liver, osteoporosis, asthma, so many things. There's a list. In this book, I have a list. There's a page, like, I think, here we go. All these are um, diseases or, you know, that are all ca caused by sugar. So. I think people don't really realize it, and we still have this mindset that it's fat, and we need to eat low-fat foods. But all the low-fat processed foods are loaded with sugar because sugar makes it taste good. And so that's where we get caught in this kind of trap. So we need to figure out how to get out of that. So when sugar was first introduced, it was like a hot commodity. People who were in a lower class or even just like the middle class didn't have access to sugar. It was a very hot commodity. If you were way up in the higher classes, that's who had sugar. So in the 1700s, the early colonists consumed about four pounds of sugar a year. And then in 1870, so just shy of 200 years later, it jumped to 47 pounds of sugar a year. So it was more um, readily available, so more people had it. It wasn't just a hot commodity anymore, but so it jumped that drastic amount in just under 200 years. Today, the average American consumes about 150 pounds of sugar a year. And to be honest, I think that that's maybe lowballing it a little bit, but 150 pounds of sugar. So we were saying this is a four pound bag of sugar. So we said, what, 45 yeah. of these in a year. So that's almost a bag a week of sugar. That's it's 52 a weeks a year. So if you can imagine eating like that much sugar every week. It's, and, it's and some people that eat a lot of fast food and drink a lot of these drinks and are, and a lot of those people are our teenagers and young adults who eat these crazy diets and they're getting more than that. So if you can imagine how much sugar they're consuming and what they're doing to their bodies. Yeah, that's the scariest thing is we don't, we don't realize it. People crave these to quench their thirst. Like my nephews will drink iced tea sometimes and it's like there's a lot of sugar in there and they don't realize it. And I try to encourage water just with anybody. Like I used to love sweetened beverages. I remember Crystal Light used to be my favorite thing to bring to like a basketball game or a practice or a Gatorade. And I would drink like the big Gatorades too, like this, like the big Gatorade, the big Powerades, and you drink this whole thing. And the amount of sugar that's in them is, it's astounding. And to be honest, when people say that they don't like water, like it's a sad excuse. What do you mean you don't like water? Our bodies are made of almost entirely water. Water is a vital thing that we need to survive. Like how do you, like that's just a sad excuse. Like I don't, I don't believe you. You just, you're addicted to sugar. I believe that, but you don't realize that. So it is, it's just crazy. And especially with like our youth and the kids and especially when you become teenagers like me walking around after school buying two liter bottles of soda. My mom probably doesn't even know that I used to do that like every single day after school because they have so much freedom. So it's how do we get 
all of you to be um, more adept with sugar and like noticing it, but then how do we educate so many other people and empower them to realize the effects of sugar and how we can stop it and like break free from its sticky finger grip. Exactly, but the sugar industry is, I mean they make these drinks really affordable. So if you can get a two liter bottle of soda for 99 cents, it's cheap. Yeah. You know? It is. So, I mean, you can add on to any of your fast food meals, right? A jumbo size drink for 99 cents. Yeah. You know? It's crazy. So it's crazy. So, a watermelon culotta at Dunkin' Donuts? Yeah. The so, me medium a medium size. culotta. I used to get culottas all the time. A watermelon culotta has 91 grams of sugar, which equals. 22.75 teaspoons. So this right here, I'd use two containers. This is how much sugar is in one medium colada. Like, just stick a straw in it and drink it right up. And then it's there's crazy. all those like coffee drinks, you know, like a, a Starbucks caramel frappuccino grande has 60 grams of sugar in it. Mm -hmm. I actually have that, uh, have that the one? frappuccino, yep. yep. Yep, so that equals about 17 teaspoons of sugar. Yeah, it's crazy. So so here's one that I thought was really pretty. Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. There's 16 grams of sugar in two tablespoons. And if people are dipping, they're using more than two tablespoons. Oh yeah. yeah. Heinz ketchup is another good one too. They have um, 12 grams per tablespoon. So so that's about the same yeah, thing. like yeah. three ta three yeah. teaspoons of sugar. And if you're putting it on your burger and then you're dipping your fries yeah. in it. Yeah, like you're you just, you just turn that nice healthy burger with lettuce and tomatoes and onions, maybe sweet potato fries on the side yeah. into all that added sugar that you didn't need. So it's crazy. Yeah. The other place I think, well, cereals and um, yogurts, I think is another huge place. So. Um, a Yoplait original strawberry yogurt has 18 grams of sugar in it. Yep. So, so does this one. This one's a yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. 18 grams of sugar. So that's five and a quarter teaspoons. Yes. So people think that they're doing really good by eating this healthy yogurt, but you're getting so much sugar along with it. So how about a plain yogurt? Plain yogurt. Plain yogurt. Well, um, so a dairy product do. has to have sugar in it because of the way that it's fermented and it's made. So lactose needs sugar to grow and to ferment. So plain yogurt and like plain like low fat milk or whole milk um, usually has about seven to 10 grams of sugar in it, which isn't bad. And again, that's like a natural sugar that's occurring in it. Because if you look at the ingredients, it's not going to have any added sugar into it. That's just something that is needed for the process in the making of the milk product. So those things aren't something that you really have to worry about, but it's when you're adding all of that in. So you don't think that it has the sugar and then you're adding like an S-Quick powder into it for the kids and now you get like a 25 gram of sugar glass of milk. Um, and when you're adding it to cereal, so this has 21 grams of sugar and this is just like a little to-go container. So this has the same, it's about five and a quarter teaspoons of sugar. And that's another big problem with youth and kids is we're giving them this in the car because it's convenient, it's easy, it's something you can grab at the store and maybe you have milk or maybe you toss them like an OJ or something in the car and they're going to school and like we we're talking about the crash and burn and they're way up here when they get into the classroom and a lot of people are finding that their kids are having trouble concentrating and they're hyperactive and their teachers are saying, oh, Johnny doesn't sit still during math class. I can't get him to concentrate. He's all over the place. He's disrupting the class and he never pays attention. But when we're giving them this sugar-laden breakfast, we're setting them up for failure and they're going to school and they're all the way up here and they can't concentrate and then they crash right before lunchtime. And then they go to lunch and they get something and they need that next fix and they're getting high way up here again and then they're crashing in the afternoon so it's like this constant thing they can't pay attention they're not sitting still they're being disruptive and then when they crash from the sugar they really can't pay attention and they're falling asleep at their desk so these kids are getting these not nice reviews from the teacher because the teachers don't know what to do they're frustrated nobody can pay attention and but 
it's the sugar fault. It's not all of these kids have all of these diagnoses that the doctors want to label on them. It's, I really think that the diet comes first and the lifestyle that these children and families, everybody in general are living, needs to be looked at first before we're trying to stick a diagnosis or a medication on somebody. It just really needs to start at a natural approach. So another um, huge little sugar fun fact that I found, I've actually taught this class a couple of times at a local juice bar and they make smoothies and she had a customer come in one time and was like, what are in your products? She was like, what do you mean? What are my products? My menu board is right there. And they were like, no, like what do you add into your products? She was like, I, I don't. Like it says right there what's in the smoothie and what's in the juice. And they were like, so you don't add anything? And she was like, what would I add into them? Because a lot of places do. So um, this is a mango passion fruit smoothie from Planet Smoothie. And it's under their like energy category. They have like different categories for their smoothies. It has over the daily amount of sugar. It has 178 grams of sugar in it. It's almost, which twice. Is, it's almost twice this. It's 44 and a half teaspoons of sugar. And then I was looking at more of the ingredients and like the nutrition facts and I'm like, oh, well, when you add like a banana and you're adding strawberries and mango and blueberries or something, it all has sugar in it. So I'm like, oh, well, the fiber is gonna be really high then. It had 10 grams of fiber which is like, a, that's like the bare minimum of fiber in something. So 178 grams of sugar in one thing. And you're drinking it because you're like, it's a fruit smoothie, it's great for you, it's so healthy. My assumption would be some type of a sweetened beverage, like an apple juice. I know um, like acai bowls there, because the acai powder is bitter, they add like an apple juice into it because it's very bland and it mixes well with other fruits. I can't say, I don't know, but it's not listed. But how do you get almost 200 grams of sugar from fruits? Yeah. I mean, you get like magical, super powerful bananas and strawberries that have all this added sugar? I don't know. Unless they're creating like almost like a paste or like concentrate from the fruits because maybe that helps it to like last longer. So they're creating almost like a simple syrup or a concentrate with the fruits and vegetables and then adding it. I don't know. I can't speak for them, but it's, it's just a shocking fact that one of the biggest things we do is drink our calories and drink our sugar calories and we don't even realize it. It's huge. So the other thing is, is sugar isn't always sugar on the label. So we gave you a handout that has the many names of sugar because we thought that was important for you to be able to see all the different names of sugar. High fructose corn syrup, I'm sure you've all heard of. That's one of the biggest, biggest culprits. And a lot of people are pulling that out. And you'll see the label that says, no high fructose corn syrup, but there's still sugar in it. It's and just a different kind of sugar. putting something else in it, yeah. Right? So I think that's important for you to be able to see. So check labels. You know, it's really interesting. I did the Whole30 diet back in the winter, and there's no sugar on that diet at all. So I read the labels of everything, and I was quite amazed at some of the things that had sugar in it, like mayonnaise and all the salad dressings and all that. And I really ended up eating not much processed anything at all because there was sugar in so much, you know. Um, so I either made it myself or I'd skipped it because there's just, it's amazing. It it's is. everywhere. It is. Bread. 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 Yeah. Bread. Yeah. The scariest thing though too with the names of sugar is you'll turn around and you'll look at the nutrition facts and you won't even recognize the name. So if something has OSE at the end, O-S-E, that's a sugar, so like fructose, sucralose, glucose, but they chemically make these products. So you can, I can't even pronounce the name that it is. But then when you see that at the end, like you know that that's a sugar. But most people don't know that, and that's what they are. They're, they're taking out the high fructose corn syrup and they're advertising it because it's a marketing piece yeah. to get you to buy the product. But then they've just added two chemicalized sugars that they've made in a factory into the product and you don't realize it because you don't know that those are sugars. Right. So what a lot of the big, um, food manufacturing companies do, they have chemists that work for them and their job is to find ingredients that are gonna make these products addictive. So like 
a bag of Lay's potato chips, you want to just keep eating and eating and eating them, right? Because they put stuff in there. So, you know, that's part of what they do with the sugar. They, because you're all going to eat more, you're going to buy more, and you're going to, but then everybody's going to end up sick and overweight. So we have to find ways to get away from that. So does anybody have any questions so far, comments? I definitely want to, we definitely want to encourage you guys to yeah. ask anything. I mean, it's a lot. There's a lot of sugar. Like this is 41 grams of sugar in an iced tea. And this is only an 18 and a half ounce bottle. So like that's not, and it's only, it's one serving size. So that's another thing you have to be mindful of. Like when you look at some of these, this has two and a half servings in it. But like I said, I'd go to basketball practice and I would drink the whole thing. You don't realize it. So you have to be mindful about the servings in a container because then you're gonna multiply it. So. This one had 41 grams of sugar, which equals 10.25 teaspoons. So you can just divide it by four, the grams. If you divide the grams by four, that's how many teaspoons are in something. This has 21 grams, but again, that's only in one serving. So that's 13 teaspoons of sugar, but then times two and a half. So that's probably about 30-ish, a little bit more of. Yeah, but so interesting that this, you know, vitamin water is supposed to be really healthy for you, right? There's 33 grams of sugar in here. So this has so 33 grams of sugar in there? Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I was like amazed. Well. This is... A 20 ounce? 20 ounce. And this is 32 ounces, yeah. so it has more so, sugar. Right. Per ounce, yeah. It's crazy. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, of course, there's your candy bars, which are, you know, 27 grams of sugar. And this is a small one. Most people don't eat them. They, meet the, they eat the bigger yeah, ones, right? The double packs. Yeah. So, but it's got peanuts in it, so it's healthy, right? So. I have found that once you eliminate sugar, except for candy, I think Yep. But I mean, as far as drinks and stuff like that, my yep. husband has a real problem drinking water. Yep. Mm -hmm. So he'll have to have his pomegranate green tea that has a little sugar in it and mix it. But I've been off it for probably 10 years, if not more. Yeah. Also, I haven't even. No, I couldn't either. I couldn't either. Right. Yeah. But as far as the drinks and stuff, yeah. it's just it's just a complete turn off for me. Yeah. Like, once you're off of it for so many years, mm -hmm. and if I sip somebody else's coffee by accident, oh yeah. And that's great. And that's great that your body can recognize that. But there's so many people that can, and it's oh, I know, but my husband's having yeah. A real difficult but it's not really their fault. No. We like the low fat movement created this craze. That's really a big thing that created this. So it's not our fault that we're being pushed and fed these products. So I, that's what I, I just kind of wanted to take a step back and not like, not that you are, but not anybody. Like I don't want to like demonize somebody because I used oh, no. to be, I used to be too. And my dad, like, like you were saying, your husband, like my dad has to have ice cream all the time and I still get my sugar cravings and it's like, how, how do we get these people to realize the amount of sugar that they're eating, how it's really severely affecting their health and then how do we take them that next step to starting to slowly coming off of it? Because if you say tomorrow, I'm never going to have any more added sugar and you're eating this much sugar a day, good luck to you. Because it's not gonna work that way. But we have to, I mean, so we start a little bit at a time by educating people, but even doctors don't know. So, you know, someone goes to a doctor, they're overweight, they have high blood pressure, they have high cholesterol, and what does the doctor say? Eat a low-fat diet and here's some medicine. But if they, if they got rid of a lot of the sugar in their diet, a lot of that other, and maybe some of the processed foods and some of the gluten, they may not have all those problems. But the doctors are the first ones to say, no, no, eat a low-fat diet and here's, so we have to educate everybody. Well, my husband's an example of that. I yeah. should keep bringing him up, but he was yeah. very overweight, yeah. loves sugar, has severe sleep apnea, has high blood pressure, the whole bit. And I yeah. finally said, I've been going through this for too many years with you, and he has to lose it. And they were pushing the medicine. Yeah. So for now two months, this is what we've been doing. He's dropped about 20 pounds. That's great. Uh, right awesome. Down. There's no blood yeah, pressure. good. And he's not snoring. He still has to go for that sleep. Good, so yeah. Him that CPAP. Yeah. But, I mean, I just told him in two months look what's happened. Look what's happened, yeah. He better. Yeah. You know, he still needs a little something with a big thing of water. Yeah. And he needs a little bit of sugar, but that doesn't bother me. Right. He's eliminated two yeah. severe problems.
Yeah, so, that's fabulous. And, and, you know, his family has type 2 diabetes. So. Yeah. Those are things that he's finally understanding because he doesn't want, want the medicine. Awesome. Yeah, good that's awesome. That's, that's, yeah, that's yeah, great. That's great. Really you should be good. really happy about that. Yeah. I'm really proud oh, of yourself. Yeah. feels so good. That's mm-hmm. awesome. That's fabulous. Did you have a question? Oh, that you yeah, say? I was wondering when you were talking about oh. sugar and the thing, that I work here, and when I first came to work here, everyone was drinking this tea, iced tea, iced yep. tea. And I thought, oh, that'd be, you know, something good to drink. And I looked at it, tea was the last item. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? There's no tea in the tea. So the nutrition fact can tell you a lot, like seeing the grams of sugar, how many servings are in it, but the ingredients, like you just yeah. said, it was the last ingredient. The last ingredient. So the first one to three, it's usually about the first and the second ingredient are 95% of what that product is made of. So it might only have seven grams of sugar in that one granola bar. But sugar is the first ingredient, so that's what you're really eating is sugar. And then oats is like the seventh ingredient, so you're only getting some of that nutritional benefit. So the nutrition label can really tell us a lot about what's in a product. Absolutely. It's amazing how many people so, are not aware. They're not aware. And then they also think that artificial sweeteners is a good solution. And my opinion, and I think yours is probably similar, is that that's not a good option. Um, I'd rather see someone have a little bit of natural sugar or like a coconut sugar or honey or maple syrup than putting, um, you know, uh, NutraSweet or some of those like a artificial low. sweeteners. Yeah. Like even stevia. It's yeah. all chemicals, exactly. Like pure stevia is made from a plant, like she was saying, like the coconut sugar and stuff. It's like the natural forms. Sugar isn't a bad thing. We just have to have minimal amounts of it and watch how much we're having. But then, like you were saying, stepping away from the artificial sweeteners and having the more natural things, the coconut sugar, the stevia, the, just the honey, the different things that you can get it from. A little bit of real maple syrup or some honey is, you know, you're better off using a little bit of that than spoonfuls of the artificial stuff because it's all chemicals and it really does cause a lot of problems. The other handout that we gave you has some information about that because we thought it was helpful to share. So how do we make this switch? Like the point isn't to remove all sugar, because like I was saying in the beginning, our body needs a little bit of glucose and it does need sugar, but we should be getting it from natural whole food sources. But how do we get ourselves and our loved ones and people around us to make the switches from some of these products to better things? And what we really need to do is something that our school talks a lot about is crowding out. So you're, instead of taking things out and saying, I need to remove things, trying to add more things in. So upping your water intake, getting more sleep, managing your stress, but then adding some better products and ingredients in. So start eating some sweeter vegetables. Like I love sweet potatoes and that could help. Like if I have that at dinner time, that's gonna help my sugar craving at night because I, I crave sugar at night. I do. I want well, we all do. some brownies. There's a really good brownie recipe on here that I made the other day. I was telling Tressa on Sunday, and it's only Tuesday, and they're pretty much gone. So <laughs> I definitely still have a sweet tooth. But it's like, how do we get to that place where we're having the better ingredients, and we're not craving so much sugar, and we're not getting 41 grams of sugar in one serving? We're getting it throughout the day. Yeah. So one thing is if you're craving sugar is have a glass of water first before you do anything else because a lot of times you think you're craving sweet or salty or whatever but what you really are is thirsty and if you drink a glass of water a lot of times that can do it. But you know like Tierney said it's a little bit is okay but do it in a smart way. So like you said before that you really like those peanut butter cups right? Reese's peanut butter cups that you could eat a whole bag of them right? So. What I like to do is take, um, I use organic, unsweetened peanut butter, and I'll take a spoonful of that and a few chocolate chips, and I just eat it like that. And it satisfies that craving, so you're getting that little salty sweet and the peanut butter, and, the, and then I don't want a peanut butter cup, you know? So you have to kind of be a little creative about it sometimes too. Obviously homemade stuff is better than, you know, if you're gonna make some homemade chocolate chip cookies, 
you know, maybe use an alternative like honey or coconut, coconut sugar, sugar is great in that. And have, you know, don't eat all, like a sleeve of Chips Ahoy is, you know, <laughs> going down Chips it's Ahoy, good, I know. <laughs> right? Yeah. But if you can do that, and you got to start slow, you know? Yeah. Because if you take everything out at once or try to focus too much on like removing too many things, nobody is going to be happy. You, your loved ones, people around you, nobody is going to be happy. So it is. It's just adding some things in, getting some better practices, cooking at home again, like making it fun. I know it's a lot of work, but enjoy doing it. Be like, I am thankful that I get to cook a meal. I went to go, I got to go to the grocery store today. I bought all these own ingredients. I know what I'm giving my body and what I'm feeding to my family. Find pleasure in the simple things. Like let's take a step back and figure out the things that make us happy and give us pleasure and get your kids involved. If you have kids or nieces and nephews, grandkids, anybody who's at home, or your spouse or your loved ones, whoever's at home with you, like get people involved and make it like a whole family household thing and have fun with it. There's so many things that you can do in the kitchen and it's just so much better than having these processed things. And it, make, it makes it an easier switch if you have other people on board with you. Yeah, but, and the thing too about, let me just say one thing. Um, if you eliminate sugar just completely, especially if you have a lot of it in your diet, it, it can be like, you get really grumpy, your moods are off, you get headaches. I mean, I remember as a kid, my parents gave up sugar for like a month and they were the most miserable people. You didn't want, I mean, I was too young to be able to go, but I would have liked to have because they were so grumpy and they had headaches and they were miserable. So if you can crowd it out and kind of slowly wean yourself, it's a much better route than trying to just cut it cold turkey and be like, especially if you have a lot of it in your diet. Did well, you want to ask? Exactly what I was going to say. I switched to a plant-based diet, like cold turkey on a Thursday. I was like, I'm just dying. Yeah. I was overweight. I had high cholesterol. Like, I just didn't feel good. Like, all the doctors were like, oh, you're going to be on medicine. Blah, blah, blah. I knew I didn't want that. Yeah. So I just, like, switched cold good turkey. Good for you. I just remember being miserable. My family was like, what is wrong with her? I had headaches. Like, it was like a wake-up call, though. Yeah. Like, oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. And now I'm like so much more happier, so much more energy. Yeah. Like, it really does work. Yeah. It just takes time. And you gotta do it in a slower approach. Maybe not cutting it cold turkey yeah. in one day. And I'd be fine, like, hey, whatever, like, like Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All about it. Just be prepared, right? <laughs> Good luck. It's not easy. It's not I think coconut sugar is sweeter, um, so you wouldn't use as much, but I'm actually not 100% positive. You would have to, there's so many charts that you can find that will show like the alternatives that would be a switch. Um, but yeah, coconut sugar is like really sweet. Agave nectar is like another big sweetener that people like to use, and it's good, and it is more natural. But the biggest thing that I found in my research with agave nectar is it's a high glycemic sugar, which means it spikes your blood sugar and affects your insulin like that. So that's where the education piece comes in because people are like, oh, sweet and low, it's great. I'm going to start adding sweet and low into my diet. And now we're starting to realize that artificial sweeteners that are chemically made aren't so great. And it's the same thing like agave nectar, it's awesome, it's an all natural sugar. But when you're adding two tablespoons or even just one tablespoon, it's got a lot of sugar in it and it's a high glycemic sugar, so it's affecting you instantly. So you're getting that high elated feel and then you're crashing. So again, it's just the education piece and letting everybody know like what is the way to go about it. Yeah. So, so you have the chart. I have a chart, but it doesn't have coconut sugar on it, which is really funny. I think um, I bake with coconut sugar a lot. My kids don't think it's as sweet as regular sugar. I use it one-to-one -one, though, when I cut, when I do it. I like it, but I, if I'm using regular cane sugar, I use organic, um, because this is, you know this is bleached, right? Mm -hmm. And processed. So, and processed. So, um, even if I do that, I cut it like in half in recipes. So I do use coconut sugar about one-to-one, -one, and I think it's plenty sweet, 
but someone that has a real sweet tooth might not think it might take a little bit of you know kind of getting used to it when you're weaning down but the good thing about coconut sugar is it's one of the most the lowest glyc on the glycemic yes. index which and is it's so really, it's really inexpensive good for you. it's yeah. not expensive it's not at expensive all. and um, I think there's some fiber in it too there is fiber in yeah. it yeah so it's because it comes I think from the coconut sap for of the me, tree that's one of my favorite options especially for baking I mean you can use honey you can use maple syrup you can experiment too there's a lot of really great recipes out there dates which are in some of the recipes yeah, that we share I love that. the brownies recipes. Um, it's just another form of cane sugar. It's just a well, marketing. Well, no, you're right. It can be marketing. You have to like actually look at the ingredients and make sure like raw cane sugar is the ingredient because that's what sugar is. It comes from the cane tree. So it can be a marketing ploy. So you just it's have really to like just make less sure. processed. It, yeah. You know, it's okay. still as sweet. So you're kind of better off with some of the other options. So, but dates are really sweet and you don't realize it. So, and they're great in, you know, these recipes. And, and you can get date sugar, too. So, yeah, I just, again, it's the education piece, but we, you need to look at all other areas of your life, too, to make sure that everything is in balance. A piece of advice that I love to give to people when I'm teaching this class is, like she was saying, drinking water when you have your sugar craving, but also just taking five minutes so like you are like the classic crash and burn the 3 p.m. slump that they call it at work so it's 3 p.m. you're craving something you don't have as much energy you're gonna go get a cup of coffee or reach into the candy bowl but instead of giving into that craving right away take a step back and go outside I can't really go outside too often at work so I'll just like stand at the bottom of the stairs and open up the door and just like get the fresh air because I've been in the office all day or walk to the bathroom. We have two bathrooms, so one's down two flights of stairs, one's down one. Sometimes I'll go down two flights of stairs just to get my blood pump in a little bit, go and talk to somebody, one of your coworkers, have some water, or just take a step back, sit at your desk or wherever you are, go outside, and just be with yourself for five minutes. Just take five minutes to feel the craving first before you immediately give into it, before you immediately dive into that Chips Ahoy sleeve or whatever it is that you're craving. Because sometimes the craving isn't necessarily for the food, it's for something else. Sometimes we need a hug, sometimes we're stressed, sometimes we just need to see some vitamin D that we haven't seen for a few days because it's been raining. There are so many other things that cravings can present themselves as. So if you just take that five minutes when you wanna dig into the bowl of ice cream at night and just be like, okay, what am I really craving? Maybe I need to talk to my spouse or just take five minutes of myself because the kids have been screaming all night and I'm just super stressed out right now. And if you still want it at the end of the five minutes, go for it. It's not to take everything away from you, but just recognize where those cravings are coming from and maybe you just need something else in your life or you just need some water. So um, it's about balancing in your life and not it's not all about what you're eating and drinking but it's about are you getting exercise and you know do you have good relationships with your friends and family and you know you how are your emotions and how's your spiritual life and you know all those things are you getting enough sleep all those things come into balance and a lot of people think that they're they're craving you know sugar or that they need but that's not really what it's about so you know maybe get up and go for a walk after dinner instead of sitting down in front of TV and you know and like Tierney said you know try something else and then if you still want it maybe try with a couple spoonfuls of ice cream instead of a whole bowl because that might be enough to satisfy your craving or maybe you don't need that whole bowl you know so and, and everybody has to figure out what works for them so because everybody's individual. So we don't expect you to be tomorrow cutting it all out, cold turkey, and having green juices for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> so, I mean, it's what works for you and how you get to that approach for yourself. I don't know. Does anybody have any questions? Please ask us anything. I'd love to answer concerns again even if it's about a family member or you want to tell me it's about a family member nobody knows who you're talking about <laughs> yeah asking for a friend um, how much wine <laughs>
<laughs> well, I mean, if you're what drinking kind of wine. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if you're drinking a whole bottle at night, you know. But so again, it could be the five minute thing. Why are you having the wine? Like, is it a crutch? Is it something that, which isn't, there isn't a problem with the things that we love and that we want, but it's, it's again, just recognizing why we're having something. So maybe before you have like, does it have to be all of the time? Maybe having a little bit less. Yeah, kick your feet up. But what if maybe like one night you had a bubble bath or you took a walk? Maybe. I mean, but if, the, if that's something that you want to have in your life every night, then that's what you have and you keep other things in balance. So you don't have to remove everything. You don't have to take every single thing out. <laughs> you don't have to, but maybe trying some different alternatives. Maybe, like I said, going for a walk, having a bubble bath, practicing some more self-care things for yourself so that you're in a better mental state. <laughs> and Maybe you can add some like seltzer water into it to make it a little bit. Yeah. Make like a spritzer. Yeah. Yeah. I know. (laughs) You don't mind a little bit. I yeah. So I I know what it's like, but um, yeah. Maybe trying and seeing just like maybe one night not and seeing how it does. See what it's what works for you. I can't give you a recommendation and tell you what's going to work and be perfect for your lifestyle for anybody. You really just got to see what works for you and what makes you, maybe you really just, that's what you have every night and that's what you have. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. Some people do that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Right. Well, I mean, sugar is everywhere in our lives. So you do have to be. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, then you think you're doing good, and then the holidays come. Yeah. You're like, all right, I'll, I'll start on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> And then Thanksgiving, Halloween, and then yeah. Thanksgiving, yeah. and Christmas. All the pumpkin ads already? Yeah. And then all the pumpkin lattes, like, like, yeah. and the pumpkin, all that floated with you. Yeah. Pat was saying that she's gotten to a point where she can't even really tolerate as much sugar. So, like, that's great yeah. when you can get to. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I'm with you on that. But it's just something that I have to spit it out. Yeah. Very sweet. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. When I was in college and stuff, it was diet. I was making diets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which again, it's... Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting if you see that most of the people that drink the diet sodas are very overweight because it's not... It's not, it's not the better alternative that they lead us to believe it to be. So... Exactly. exactly, exactly. So it makes it okay, it. right? It makes it okay. Yeah. It makes it okay. Yeah. 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 No ketchup. No ketchup, right? Or extra sugar in it. Yeah. 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 It doesn't, and it's better sugar. It's not like a high fructose corn yeah. syrup. So yeah. that's. Does he, does, he, does he eat it every meal? I mean, no, but he tried. <laughs> <laughs> He'd put a straw in it if really? he could. Yeah. He tried. You know, I don't know. Oh, I don't think it's only the two of us in the house. Where did this go? Right. So, I mean, there's some recipes you could make homemade ketchup, and then. Yeah. 
you know, really control the sugar, but he probably might not like it as much because there's probably something about it that. Yeah. Well, that's a good start. Yeah. You gotta start. That's the thing. You know, you gotta start slow, and you know, because if you change too much, sounds like it. And if you change too much too fast, then a lot of times they go the other way because it's. Yeah. 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 No. So it sounds like. Yeah. You're doing a good job of kind of introducing it slowly, and that's the best way. Yeah. Because a little bit at a time, and then he's going to keep. Himself, you know? Exactly. But if he keeps going in this direction, then that's yeah. fabulous. Yeah. And it's just small steps over time, and they are coming out with better alternatives. The marketing is slowly getting better, not from like the big companies that are controlling a lot of this, like Monsanto, like the big companies that are controlling, but they are getting slowly better and something that's actually coming i believe next year it's in 2019 um on nutritional labels underneath sugar they're going to have to add that includes this many grams of added sugar so i'm not sure how much faith i have that it's going to be 100 percent accurate just knowing what i know in the way that it already is now but it's a step in the right direction and people say that all the time like well it doesn't matter i'm only one person we're only two people up here. Right. I'm only one person when I'm in front of a class. Yeah. But if I can create a change in one person, yeah. that's huge. So me to one person, now that's two people. And then you go home and you share it with somebody else and you, it's, it's the effect, it's the, rip, the what, riptide, ripple, ripple effect, effect. yeah. Absolutely. We can make the change. We just need to realize that. We need to feel empowered for ourselves and to take control of our health so that we can make the change. Because it only starts with one person. Because if it didn't start with one person, who's it gonna start with? How is the change ever gonna happen if one of us doesn't do anything about it? So take these educational pieces and don't go home and change everything. You're gonna be miserable. Right. Cutting a cold turkey doesn't right. work for everybody. Oh, no, it works for you, that's great. Yeah, it's been since, it'll be two years in the fall. Two years. That's great. That's awesome. Good yeah. for you. Happened fast though. Nine yeah. months. Nothing like it. Wow. And I've just I've maintained for a Yeah. Year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. That's good. That's, That's very good. good. So it's yeah. what it is. It's what works for you. Yeah. Because yeah. I try everything under the sun. I try Weight Watchers. I try yeah. Jane Craig, like everything. And nothing ever stopped. Nothing worked. Yeah. And then I found four yeah. so nice and then she Oh, that's a great movie. Yeah. 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 Love that. It's yeah. a documentary. It's a great documentary. Yeah. 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 So, and Tierney and I both work as health coaches. So we take people in, you know, private clients. We can work with groups. We're happy to help people. If anybody has any questions, you have our information. Contact us. We're always happy to answer questions, help you in any way that we can. That's what we're passionate about. So go home, share this information with other people. Be the change. You really can. Share it with somebody and we can make a difference. We really can. And if you know anybody that needs to learn about this, we're going to be in, um, at the Whole Foods Market in Weymouth tomorrow night. And we're going to be teaching many classes, so yeah, we're, we're not gonna, going anywhere. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be around. So, Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. It was awesome.